الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والبيته ونتبع سنة أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى كل نفس ذائقة الموت إنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحز عن النار وادخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور كما قال عز وجل شأنه في سورة الزمر الله يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل يرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك العيات لقوم يتفكرون كما قال عز وجل شأنه يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في قول ثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويدل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم والعقبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Allah Azza wa Jalla Shanahu has given us this Jumatul Mubarak to us for the blessing to seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the forgiveness. I recited the ayah, every soul have to taste the death. Kullu nafsin za'iqatul maut. Innama tawafuna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamah. Indeed, whatever you have sent for will be returned to you completely. فَمَنْ زُحْزَنَ النَّارِ وَأَدْخِلِ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسْ Whoever has been pushed away or has been distanced from the fire of the hell, he has or she has the everlasting, never-ending success. So the ultimate success is the success in the hereafter. That is the meaning to be understood. The woman hayatu dunya illa mata'u al This worldly life or life of the world is nothing but an illusion. And it's a very strong word and there's not enough time for me to comprehend myself or to explain or share. But everybody understood the word. The life of this world is nothing and is an illusion. Ghurur is an illusion. When somebody does a magic in front of you and that disappears and there was nothing. So then I then try to put tadbiq in this description with the Surah Zumr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah yadawaffal anfus. Allah put death to every soul. Hina mutiha. Collect and as it was. Wallati lam tumut fi manamiha. And those who do not die in the state of sleep, that is the description. When we sleep, we are every ex night experiencing death. For yumsiku allati qada alayha al maut. And then Allah holds the one who have ordained to be dead in the death, in the sleep. وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ And let go the rest of the soul to a death appointed time. إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ In this there is a sign for people who reflect and ponder. So death experience is of a personal experience everyone have every day and every night. Little unusual thing about when we go to sleep, when sleeping to wake up we have no clue what happened in last those six, eight hours. It's one third of our life we spend sleeping. Out of 24 hours, if you take out eight hours, that's one third of a day. So one third of a day we die. And when we wake up from that death, we remember our dreams, our experience in the night, in the sleep. And that is the world of barzakh. That is the world beyond this alert world, what we have, conscious world. And we have no time and no weight in that experience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us when you die, the difference is that soul which Allah took for yamsik, which Allah grabbed and did not allow to return back. He keeps it. Other one, they allowed to go back and for a destined, predestined time. And tasting of a death is that the depart from body to the soul. Tasting of a death is like when you taste zaiqa. Zaiqa is a tasting, not eating. When you have a dinner or when you have a food. When you taste something. So temporarily body separate from the soul while asleep and also while in the grave. The difference is that does not return into the body when it is dead permanently. But it does return for both situations. 
When we are in the cover, inshallah, I will narrate a hadith about Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, you will be put through the test, a fitna of the cover, like the Dajjal al Masih, like the fitna of the Dajjal, you will be getting an experience. So then there is something very unusual which is Quran talks about and we should understand Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ when we are there, just talking about the people who are dead. Allah is saying, Allah will make the firm, Allah will make the firm of those people of Iman about their saying. In the worldly life, those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, man rabbuka ma deenuka ma kunta taqul fil haqqa haza rajul, these things, when we believe, we say, Allah is my Lord, Islam is my faith, and Muhammad Rasulullah is my messenger. When we say in this world, in the grave, nobody is there to support our claim. But Allah says, Allah will make them firm on this statement. Allah will make firm the claim and statement of the believer, the one they used to say when they were alive, fil dunya wa fil And Allah let go the, this transgressor to whatever they may go. And Allah does whatever He pleases. This hadith about this ayah, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu were asked about the azab al and they said, where in the Quran, people ask, where in the Quran is mentioned about the azab or thabab of qabr? He said, this ayah of Surah Ibrahim is the evidence of that claim, of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, there's a long hadith. In Bukhari 86 is the hadith number <coughs> in the book of Ilm, the Kitab al-Ilm, or the knowledge. So, Asma radiallahu anha, Sister of Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates that there was a, once there was a eclipse and she was there for the performing the salah and she asked Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, now does this thing have any significance? And she nodded with her head and the hadith goes with this narration. Then she described she f stood and joined the prayer of the eclipse and then she felt dizzy and she threw water on her and then got herself better. That's all hadith narration. And then after the salat was performed, فَقُمْتُ حَتَّى تَجَلَّانِي الْيَغْشَ فَجَعَلْتُ أَصَابَ عَلَى رَاسِ الْمَاءِ She talks about herself that I felt a little dizzy while the prayer and then when I got out, got some water myself and got better. فَحَمْدُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ وَأَثْنِ الْعَلَيْهِ Prophet ﷺ praised the hamd of Allah and the glory to Allah. ثُمَّ قَالْ And then he says, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ لَمْ أَكُنْ أَرَيْتُهُ إِلَّا Prophet says, I have been shown ma min shay'in lam akun araitu, which has, I have never seen. This moment I was shown in this place, fi maqami al jannah wal nar, at the jannah and the hellfire and the paradise. Fa uhi ilayya, and then Allah sent the wahi upon me. Innakum tuftuna, tuftuna fi quburikum misli aw qariban la adri ayya zalik. You will be put through the fitna of the qabr and the punishment or the judgment of the qabr that you have not known about. Qalat Asma, Asma said, Min fitnat al Masil Dajjal? Do you mean the fitna of the Dajjal of Jesus or the Dajjal al Masih? You call, Ma alimaka by Hazal Rajul. Ma alimaka by Hazal Rajul. Ma al Mumin, O al Mukinin, La Adri. بِأَيِّهِمَا قَالَتْ أَسْمَعَ فَيَقُولْ هُوَ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ جَاءَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَهُدًا وَأَجَبْنَا وَاتَّبَعْنَا وَهُوَ مُحَمَّدُ ثَلَاثًا Three times this question was Prophet says when she asked for the detail that you will be asked about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the grave. When the person is put into grave, the angel will come and they will ask this one question. This hadith, almost there are 59 hadith in just Bukhari alone about this matter. 
that in the grave, a dead body is brought back to life. The soul is reunited with the body and they ask the question. And Rasulullah is saying that how significant this point is. Fitna Masil Dajjal, that will happen to the people on the earth. Similar to that kind of fitna means test. In Arabic, fitna means test. That harshness of test will be asked to the people in the grave about that. What was your knowledge about this man, Muhammad Rasulullah Another hadith which says, So there are multiple words are used in description of this particular question. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will be in the grave when he was alive, still when the companions and Muslims died, he was brought into the grave. Then when he was above the ground, when he's in the ground, then he's still been brought and question being asked to every soul all over the world. What was your knowledge about this man? In this particular hadith, the other hadith is what you used to say about this man. Muhammad Rasulullah is here. For man and woman, Whoever is a believer, wal muqin, the one who have iqan and yaqeen about Muhammad Rasulullah, la adri bi ayyahuma, will not know anything other than this qalat fa yaqul, huwa Muhammad Rasulullah. As my saying, that question will be about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the person will say, Ja'ana, he came to us, bil bayyanat, with the clear sign, wal huda, with the guidance, wajibna wa taba'ana huwa. Muhammad Salas. We accepted and replied to him. Wajabna. We replied to him. Jawab. Wattabana. We obeyed him. Attaba. Wa Muhammad. Three times a person will say in the grave that this is he is a Muhammad. The person who believed him. Fayakal Nam Salih. The angel will say, Go, you were righteous. Qad alimna in kunta la muqinan bihi. We knew that you know that. The angels who are coming will be asking to the Muslim soul and the body in the grave that we know you were the one who was going to answer this. So angels also know before they're coming, but they are asking. There will be three questions in the grave. Man Rabbuka, who is your Lord? Ma Dinuka, what is your belief and faith? Ma kunta taqul fil haqqa hazar rajul or wo ma ilmaka bi hazar rajul. The third question is so important. That the first two questions are also important. You cannot come to third unless you are first to write. Who is your Lord? Whoever has a Lord, whatever they worship, they will say that is, and a Muslim will say, Rabbi Allah. Madinuka, what is your faith? Whoever is have their faith, their practice, they will say, this is my faith. And Muslim will say, Ad-Din Islam. Deen Islam, my Deen is Islam. And then the third question, whoever have heard about Rasulullah, they will say, we have heard about him. This is about the particular of the hypocrites. They did say they are Muslim, but they don't believe in Rasulullah is a hypocrite. Well, Martaba La Adri Ayyadalik. They will say we don't know about it. La Adri. Qalat Asma Fa Yaqul La Adri. Sammaitun Nas Yaquluna Shayin Fakat Fakultum. They will say we have heard about this man that people used to say he was the messenger of God or he was a prophet of God or he whatever. So this hadith is very unusual to affirm our belief and our faith about Allah and His Messenger and Islam. And as we know, this is Rabbi Sani, the month of only Allah, which I call. So in Islam, people ask, where is this business about doing dua or Isa al sawa or, or Fatiha or what do we do after a dead person? What is their business with us? If a person has died, that person has done his deed. What is the Kitab of Aman? But the first kitab of amal we do for the dead person is we take care of their body. We give them a ghusl. Before ghusl, we give them a wudu. Everybody knows, right? Whoever done the ghusl of a dead body caring as a Muslim, we give them a wudu. A dead body is getting a wudu. What's the purpose? Wudu is for purification, for living. But we treat that person not like a gone. We call it transformation, intiqal, transfer. So we give them a wudu, and then we give them a ghusl, and then we put them a kafan, a dress, and then we put the fragrance on their body so the body odor will not be there. And then what we do, in which the dead body has no part, we do salat al janazah. What we say, we put the dead body in front of us, we go Allahu Akbar. 
And then we make the dua. We do the four takbirat. And then we do the salam. It is a dua for on behalf of that Isa al salam. Allahumma aghfir li hayyana wa mayyatina wa zakrana wa unsana wa shahidana wa ghaibana wa saghina wa kabirina Allahumma man ahayta minna fa'ahiyya lal-islam wa man tawafayta minna fatafafa wa lal-iman This is the dua If we could not attend So what we are doing is we are making a dua of this person And then what we get in return We get the reward equal to a mountain of ahad A qirat ajr Which is Ajr equal to a mountain of Ahad. And the one who goes to the cemetery get the two rewards of equal to two Khira. And then when this person is dead and gone and we bury this person, we tell them Talqeen. Some people don't believe but this is uh, Ahl Sunnah ulama says, do the Talqeen. It is, you remind them. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah man rabbuka ma deenuka ma Allahu Rabbi Islam deeni Muhammad Rasulullah because person is having a totally different experience in the grave which we do not know and according to the hadith when people are there the person hear the footsteps of the people when they are leaving so they can hear so the body is dead yet they are hearing we saw that we put them in the coffin where there's no room to sit up this is why Muslim when they make grave they make enough space so the believers that the body can come and sit up it metaphorical description which we cannot see because now this experience is in the barzakh which we used to experience every night one eight eight hour of a day we were in the bed experiencing our dead and now this person is into the dead of that experience so people ask where in the quran it is mentioned that you do anything after this person is dead surah yunus allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ala inna awliya allah illa khawfun alayhim wa lahum yasun indeed the friends of allah they have nothing to fear and they have no grief either. They were the believer and they had the taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Even though when we commit sin and disobey, if I do a crime in front of a police officer, he will not let me go unless he's somebody to deal with. The world does not leave, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us that we are committing sin. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, whenever you do this sin, do a good deed and make the tawbah. Allah will wipe out the sin and the hasanat in your account. Yeah. For them there is a good news and a glad tiding in the worldly life, wafil akhirah, in the hereafter, means from the qabr to the day of judgment and in the jannah. You see, all the passages are covered. And this is another thing. Allah's words do not change. When Allah says something, the words are not going to change. Indeed, this is the greatest of the success. So this is a status of a believer who is a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they come and they did and they left. And then many of us who are not so righteous and pious. So what we do? We have been told those who are coming after the dead one in Surah Hashr, chapter 59, Allah SWT says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ Now those who came after the people who have died already a generation. So our relatives, our loved ones, our friends, all the Muslims who have died from Adam al Islam to Muhammad Rasulullah until today, and whoever has been dead. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا In Arabic, جَا means, Urdu me kehati na, جَا ka matab chala jai, Arabi me kehati, جَا ka matab aja. Aya. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا Those who came in مِنْ بَعَدِهِمْ After those who have gone يَقُولُونَ And then they say the living one who came in the next generation or those who are living رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Our Lord forgive us The first dua person should ask my Lord forgive me Before we ask for anybody we should seek our forgiveness وَلَإِخْوَانِنَا لِلَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ And our brethren who have passed away before us in the state of Iman وَلَا تَجَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمُنُوا And do not put any ill feeling in our hearts about the deceased one. This is the hadith of Rasulullah Wasallam. Whoever have passed away, do not talk about their mistakes and wrongdoing. Talk about the good of them. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one hadith, very interesting hadith. He says, كُلُّ أُمَّتِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى Every one of my ummati will enter the jannah except the one who denied. Another hadith, he says, every one of my ummati will enter the Jannah except the one who announces sin publicly. And he said, if a person had a marriage and has a spousal relation with his spouse, and they talk to the other people what they did in their bedroom to other, 
is being robbed by shaitan and is the curse of the person. One should not talk about his bedroom talks to the friends and think it's, it's something I did or she did or he did. This should not be discussed. The personal life is very private. In Islam, the privacy is so much protected. When Umar once was walking by as he was walking around the city to see oh, Muslims are safe and everything is good. And he heard some music and people were drinking alcoholic beverages. Akrama was the Sahabi radiallahu anhu who had become Muslim in the, after the Fatih Makkah. Abu Baidah bin al-Jarrah was with him. And Umar radiallahu says, I want to break the door of this house and punish these people. Abu Baidah bin al-Jarrah stopped him. He said, you have no right to enter their home. This is their privacy. Your rule is only outside the house. You cannot take people's bedroom. And what Pakistanis are doing, astaghfirullah, that they are recording people's videos. That's a shameful thing. This is what Islam teaches us that the privacy of a person is more important than anything. And a person who publicizes his own sin, then that day he will not be entering the Jannah. So do not publicize your sin. Only seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keep it. If Allah kept secret of the sin of a person, we should not. Yes, coming to an alim and asking for what to do is another issue, but not boasting about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَجَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمُنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ لَرَوْفُ رَحِيمُ So more, uh, do not put any ill feeling in our hearts about the, our diseased brothers and sisters who have passed away. And my Lord, indeed you are all forgiving and merciful. So this hadith and this ayah tells us that when people have deceased and passed away, we should come and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness of those people at the dua. Individually, collectively, what we do, it has evolved into this which is called Fatiha, or it is called Isa al sawab or as it is called Barsi, or Sanawiya, or Urs. These are all the gathering which are done in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the deceased person to seek forgiveness for that person. Feeding people, reading Quran, make the dua, this is what it is. If people do something extraordinary, this is because it is not a farad. People, whoever do something more and less of which is not to be done, it is accountable for their deeds. We as a, as a Muslim, we should stop people from doing uh, for that. The next question is about the visiting to the deceased in the grave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadith from Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam kitab al-janazah it says the ziyara of the qubur uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, uh, make this narration and qala Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam zara Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam qabri ummihi Prophet sallallahu alayhi visited the grave of his mother and this incident, this visit was very late, right before the last years of his life. For Abaka, he cried. Wabki and Min and all the companions, when they saw Prophet is crying at the grave of his blessed mother, they started crying too. So it has been described that Prophet ﷺ with his companion when they were coming to Medina from the visit, and he disappeared. The Sahaba went out to look for him. And they found he's sitting in a place where his mother, six years age when he was there, and now about 57 uh, years age, he's visiting. This many years have passed. Prophet first time visiting the grave of his mother because nobody knew where he went, but he knew where he was going. Allah has shown him and he knew. So he was sitting there like as a squatting position. And he has tears flowing from his eyes. To the point that his entire beard turned wet and his clothes become wet from his own tears. When the Sahaba saw the Rasulullah is crying, they came around and they sat down and they started crying. This is reported in the life of Nabi Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. So, Faqal. Then Nabi sallallahu said to Sahaba, Astazan to Rabbi min astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah falam yuzan ali. When I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to seek the forgiveness from my mother, Allah says, don't do that. Why? Ulama describe how, why? Some people translate because she was a sinner, na'udhu billah min zalik. They say because she was a sinner, so you cannot ask for the forgiveness of a sinner, na'udhu billah. It's not the case. Because if she was to be seeking forgiveness, it means she was a sinner and prophet have to seek forgiveness for her. She was a mu'mina, she was a muslima, because she died, she was an adina hanif before the prophet was announcing his prophethood. So believers says, ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, ulama says, because Allah did not want people to say that she was a sinner, that prophet have to seek forgiveness for her. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped her from death. وَاسْتَزَنْتُهُ فِي أَنْذَأَرُ قَبْرِهَا I was given permission to visit her grave. فَإِذَنْ لِي فَرُوْ فَزُرُوْ الْقُبُورْ فَإِنَّهَا تَزْقَرَةُ الْمَعُوْ Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, So now, before I had stopped you from visiting the graves, now I give you permission to visit the grave of deceased, your loved ones. So it reminds you about your destination, you will be coming there. So we should visit the cemetery of our loved ones or anybody to remember that we will be there and we will be questioned about it. And we should be ready to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This hadith is from Muslim. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, what is he for us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah Al-Imran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَأَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَطْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ عَيَاتِهِ وَيَزَكِيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ لَفِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, Indeed, Allah have done a manna. In Arabic, manna means greatest of the favor. No favor greater than that favor. Allah is saying, Allah has done the greatest favor upon the believers, al-mu'mini, that he appointed a prophet or messenger of among their own kind, who recite them the ayahs, the Quran, and purifies them and give them the knowledge of the book, which is Quran, and the wisdom. And before this, they were in an utter clear misguidance. So in this reference, there's a hadith from Surah uh, An-Nasai. Uh, this is from Ma'awiyya radiallahu ta'ala anhu. أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خرج عليه هلاقة يعني من أصحابه. Prophet was sitting in his room and he came out to the Masjid al-Nabawi and companions were gathered and they were doing discussion group discussion. They used to sit in the Masjid and talk about different matters. There was a one particular group he came to. There were others, but he went to one particular group. فقال. Then he asked and he said, ما أجلسكم؟ Why are you sitting here? قال. The group said, جلسنا نعدو الله. We are sitting here to nadu, dua, or calling, invoking Allah's name. Wa and we do the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alama hadana le deen, he about that he guide us to his deen. Wa manna alay nabi. Earlier we heard, laqad manna Allah, and they sing, wa manna alay nabi. From the greatest favor Allah have done upon us through you, or by you. So the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu in the world is being described in the Quran as manna, ba'tha, rasula, ja'a. These are the four words with the coming of Rasulullah to the world in the Quran is being used in multiple places. Qala, then Prophet said, Allah, ma'ajlasukum illa dhalik. By Allah, were you sitting for this only? Nothing else? Qalu, Allah. By Allah, they said, by Allah, ma jalasna illa dhalik. We were sitting for nothing but for that purpose. So group discussion when we do the zikr, that is the zikr which companions were doing in the Masjid al Nabawi. So gathering people do the azkar, the loud or the quiet. Some people say only you can do alone. This is the group of people is mentioned. So do the zikr Allah and gathering is what it is. Qal, Prophet says, ma inni. He said, by Allah, I did not ask you this to accuse you of anything. While I was in my room, in my room Jibreel Islam came to me, and then he gave me this news. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, Allah is boasting about you people in the, in the gathering of malaika. So when we do the zikr of Allah and the zikr of Rasulullah and we say, Allah, thank you for making Muhammad being my messenger and me by his ummati and thank you for having he as the greatest favor in me life, in my life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts about this among the angels gathering. So what could be better zikr than the zikr of Allah or zikr of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa celebrated his own aqiqah. Inshallah some other time I'll talk about it. So with this I will stop. Wa akhir dawana alhamdulillah.